Okay guys, so we're going to check out some Roscoe's now. It's a popular bike, fairly fresh bike from Trek, um, but we've been selling them really well for the past couple of years. And um, we have a couple of the 2019s, plus some of the 2020s. So we're going to pull this guy out and check it out. So this here, we have the 2020 Roscoe 6. So this comes with the Shimano Dior setup. It is a one by 10 setup. So it has a nice range to it with the extended cassette on the back. Um, but it keeps it nice and simple, keeps that chain under a lot of tension so it's not going to bash around as much there. They do put a pretty decent fork on the front of this. It does have the 32 mil stanchions, so you get a little more stiffness out of this, a little more responsive, and it's going to keep that performance on the trail where you need it most. This one comes stock with 2.8 inch wide tires, so that's the main benefit of the Roscoe. Going to a 2.8 inch wide, you're gonna have a much more responsive bike. Um, a 2.8 inch is gonna absorb the trail a little bit better and it's going to make the ride a little comfier. As well, the geometry of the Roscoe is pretty relaxed, so it's gonna be a playful bike. The Roscoe 6 does not have a drop post, but it does have extra routing points, so you are able to either route a dropper post and a point for a front derailleur. If you wanna switch it to a two by, it's up to you. Comes with some decent Bontrager Trail grips here, some Textro hydraulic disc brakes, um, and an overall clean setup. It is kind of nice. You only have the one lever on the side. There's no drop post cable, so it looks like a nice clean bike. You'd get the lockout on the front fork, minor adjustability, and then matching pedals if you want to keep it. They've done a nice job with this one this year. Um, rack points are still there. You still have a bunch of bottle mounts if you need and it's a nice lightweight frame. This is Trek's Alpha Aluminum Gold Series. Okay, so now we've got the Roscoe 7. So some major upgrades to Roscoe 7 are features like the dropper post. So if you're looking to get a little more aggressive on the trail or just have the benefits of a dropper post, which are things as Climbing on and off the bike's easier. Downhills are easier. Rough terrain is much more easy because you can get that seat down out of the way and allow your legs to be a bit more suspension. Actually goes to the SRAM SX this year for the 2020. So you actually is the first level of the Eagle getting you that 12 gears on the back. Uh, it's really nice. You do get a lot more range with that. You get an upgraded tire, still a 2.8, but it goes again to a much more trail ready tire. A little more aggressive, just to match. And then you get upgraded to a RockShox fork with air. So you can adjust that for your own weight a lot more accordingly. And you're able to get a bit more responsive ride than the, the Roscoe 6. Nice color scheme on this one. Obviously, you have one more port. They still have the same frame, alpha gold aluminum, and you can mount a front derailleur if you want. Maybe you'll switch it up to a Shimano 1x12 or 2x11, whatever the case may be. S Shimano brakes on this one instead of the Textro, so a minor upgrade. You may notice some performance differences, but otherwise, it's a nice, well-stocked bike. Go into the 1x12, big upgrade. Going to a 1x12, big upgrade compared to the Roscoe 6. As well, going to the dropper post and those Shimano brakes. Everything you see is upgraded. The tires, wheels, shifting, everything. So for the small amount of money it is from the Roscoe 6 to the Roscoe 7, a lot of, lot of value in that. Okay, switching it up for one last bike. We got the Roscoe 8, really nice color scheme. We've had a lot of people like this. Um, not crazy changes from the Roscoe 7 this year. You do get a huge upgrade in a fork going to that brand new 35 mil stanchion Rock Shocks. You're gonna see a really big improvement in stiffness of the fork because of that. The overall travel is the same. You're just gonna see a performance on cornering and taking hits, it's gonna perform really well all the way through the shock, just due to that extra stiffness gained. You also go to a SRAM NX, so still the Eagle, still one by 12, 
but it's gonna be a little faster, little wider, and honestly not a huge difference. The descending crank probably drops off a huge amount of weight compared to the SX, but on the trail, I don't know if you'd notice a big difference in the Roscoe 7 or Roscoe 8 this year. Um, minor touches, the brakes are upgraded to one level, it's the same levers, um, same dropper post, very similar bike to the Roscoe 7, you're just getting slightly lighter parts, really the big upgrade is this. Also if you did not know, the Roscoe comes stock with 27 by 2.8 inch tires, Big benefit will fit a 29 rim in it with a 2.6 unlike the Excalibur which is not able to fit the plus size tires in there and you would be limited on your tire size so in the past two videos I've looked real quickly across the two main lines of Trex entry-level bikes and that's the Merlin series and the Roscoe series the Excalibur I think is disappearing a little bit and this is just my opinion if you're looking for an entry-level hardtail, you're gonna be going into Merlin. That's a bike which you'll be able to commute with as well as, as well as hit the trail. If you're looking for a nice relaxed geometry, a little more friendly on the downhills, a little more friendly on the aggressive stuff, the Roscoe is gonna be your choice of bike. The Excalibur is for the guys who are starting into racing cross country and they really think that that's where they're gonna go. That's what you should get. If you're just looking for a general purpose trail bike, Roscoe. If you're going to look for one which does a bit of both, I'd do the Merlin. And with a bit of both, I'd say if you're doing 50-50, 50% 50 -50, 50 of the time you're going to be in city streets, paved roads, or gravel, you'll really benefit from the Merlin series. If you're going to be mainly on the trail, that's where I'd look at the Roscoe. If you're looking for a playful bike and you're out there to have fun, the Roscoe is going to be a really responsive bike, easy to use, and it's going to be the most user-friendly. Let's recap. Excalibur, the guys who are looking to race cross country. The Roscoe are the guys who are looking to have fun on the trails and get around places. The Marlins, your entry level commuter as well as your entry level trail bike, do it all. So let me know what you think is the right bike for you. Do you already ride? Are you on a Marlin and thinking about getting into cross country racing? Should you go to the Excalibur series? Or should you look for a little more play and a little more fun with a value-packed Roscoe? My pick out of these bikes is go with a Roscoe 7. You get the 1x12, you get the drop post, you get a decent set of brakes and a solid front fork. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm going to keep making them. They're mediocre at best, but maybe someone will get something out of it. Good luck, guys.